Well, it's great to see you, Mason. Thanks for being here with me. And I'm sorry we can't be in person, but this piece is a story. It really tells our, our journey of not being able to be in the same place at the same time, doesn't it? And I feel that this is a piece really born out of this time. I mean, that it's a fact because uh, when I came to you, I had the idea of bringing together a few elements. Of course, your incredible experience working and melding technology into acoustic uh, music and symphonic music, but also I talked to you a lot about my relationship with Beethoven during this 2020 anniversary year, 250th anniversary of his birth, and how, how I felt that he really was the perfect symbol for what we're going through with feeling isolated and separated because as he lost his hearing, he, he, became, he became almost desperate for human contact and he became more and more insular just by the nature of it. So those were the two elements that really brought me to giving you a call that day. Yeah, I think that was such a brilliant idea. I, you know, we all know that Beethoven was kind of trapped in his head, but I, I just don't think I would have ever have, have made the, the leap. In retrospect, it seems so, uh, so, so, so obvious and so perfect, but um, I haven't had anybody say that before. Beethoven really had a kind of isolation that is something that we can relate to. And um, the element of, of Zoom, you know, it's like we said, it's, it's a medium that we're all thankful for, but it's frustrating when you are experiencing a little glitch or there's just the inevitable hiccup it, it, it just kind of reminds you how far apart you are. And those, those little sounds, those little like kind of data uh, communication platform sounds are, are the first things you hear in the piece. Um, and the idea it of the piece is- the this. electronic track that you created, right? And those yeah, are- I, Yeah, I- Those are just, those are, um, those are sounds that we would encounter on Zoom or tell us what those are about. Yeah, where do the sounds come from? I, um, you know, I, I kind of set up um, some microphones near my computer and just r ran some some like Zoom, Skype, FaceTime calls. And sometimes some of the sounds are actually just like the actual computer sounds. Um, uh -huh. Some of them are like the fans whirring. Um, I did capture a couple little like stutters and hiccups. And I wanted to, to just have that float in in the electronic part as the orchestra um, opens in a kind of ambient way. And the element that you brought into the piece, the Beethoven, is, is it's, you hear it if you really listen carefully, the opening three notes of the Ode to Joy. It's, it's, it's definitely kind of like understated because you know that's the kind of a theme you don't want to just whack over somebody's head. <laughs> but you hear that kind of memory of the Ode to Joy and the reason I wanted to quote that particular piece is that, first of all, um, social, cultural stuff aside, um, it's an incredible use of just a very few notes. Yeah. And um, to be able to, to just play three notes and dial up a theme, it, it's a testament to that pure melody. But um, of course, you know, the Ode to Joy is, is this call to mankind to kind of come together. And, um, that really becomes the opening um, several notes of, of my own theme, which really kind of blooms a couple of minutes into the piece. And to capture the idea of this separation that we're all experiencing, you ask for uh, several of the musicians to be separated from the main orchestra and from each other. You wanna talk about that for a second? I, I, I'm always, being a composer of orchestral music, I'm always thinking about, you know, um, how can a piece um, have a life, you know? And obviously we are going to get back to concert halls and I think we're gonna be incredibly ready to do that. Um, when that happens, you know, uh, we can have normal symphonic concerts uh, with orchestras on the stage, but of course we all know that there are like sometimes offstage instruments and Mahler or whatnot. 
Um, and occasionally our pieces have spatial elements. I wanted to take that concept and um, kind of hardwire it to the dramatic element of the piece just by placing a handful of musicians around the hall. Um, there are a couple of woodwinds on one side and a couple of brass on the other. And when you have them in the middle, like on stage, um, a kind of a classically sized orchestra, um, primarily strings, that gives you like kind of three different kind of spatial places. And mm -hmm. so you hear these kind of fragments of the Beethoven come kind of left and right. The, the string orchestra on stage is kind of anchoring them. And the piece is really about those textures slowly coming together. And um, that definitely happens through um, the birth of this, this melody and this kind of effusive, um, almost like a, a epiphany that happens um, at the climax of the piece. Um, should we talk for a second about the title? Because I know you, it wasn't titled for a while. And then you came up with this, your invented word. Yeah, well, we all are in kind of this, this word distance, social distancing, um, or people keeping their distance. And, um, you know, the title undistant is, is obviously a kind of um, call to come back together. We are just not set up as creatures to, to be like this. I mean, undistant. Have, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, to, to be all separated. It's so difficult. I mean, physically, also just reading people's expressions, making music, everything on this planet is, is set up um, because humans are social. Um, so the idea of, of the kind of uh, made up word undistant is to kind of dream of the time that we will uh, come back together. And obviously, as people, we want that Performing arts, especially in, in this country, in the US, um, I just don't think that the general populace has thought about um, what it means for us in the way that they might think about their favorite restaurant around the corner. It's really tough. Um, so many performers, their entire lives are completely just illegal. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just, I am very much looking forward to getting back. Uh, yeah, I think I think we all are, and you know, I mean, I, maybe I'm the you know ultimate optimist, but I feel every time I'm able to gather with musicians that there's a special appreciation that maybe we had lost before. You know, just being a little bit um, uh, immune to to the the greatness of our experience, and the fact that when we come back together now, it's so special. And I hope we can hang on to that as we move forward and remember what a privilege it is to be musicians. Um, but again, as you say, I, my heart breaks for so many of our colleagues that have really you know, lost their livelihoods and had to make other choices just to, to keep food on the table, yeah. Yeah, I, I do appreciate your optimism about it because um, you know, I think we all probably got to a point where you just had to like take your own emotional health into your hands and um, optimism is important. And, you know, even pre COVID, like you can say a lot about, okay, this is an ancient art form that is, you know, competing with Netflix and whatnot, but it's, it's the strength of live music is, is something that, you know, you're never going to get. Um, like on a digital platform. And yes, there, I think there's gonna be some great ways that um, orchestras can maybe have a hybrid model, maybe like, like you know, live sports with something that it's brought into living rooms. But um, I think this just more than ever affirms the, the uniqueness of experiencing something with a lot of people in a space and particularly the orchestra, you know, it's, it's such an incredible creation all the different instruments, uh, different materials and different engineering behind them and all these different people kind of coming together. Um, it really is gonna be exciting to see. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that fall of 21, we can all, you know, kind of come back and, and just, I think it's gonna be a really emotional uh, opening of a season. Oh, I do too. And uh, as you say, it's, um, that's what live music, it, it's about connecting. And that human connection is something that we 
we miss desperately right now. So I'm thrilled that we can connect over Zoom at least and connect your piece now to uh, the musicians and to the audience. I hope, I hope you like it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'll do my best. We've done kind of a lot together and it's great to be coming back to this orchestra. I mean, it, it was uh, a piece of my mass transmission that, um, you know, actually also has a, a kind of a communication over long distances storyline that um, was brought there years ago. And I'm just thankful to be working with you and to see that, you know, things can happen. Um, you know, it's great to see you out there doing different things in different countries all over the world. Um, so thank you. I'm doing my best. All right, thanks for everything, Mason. Anything else you guys want? Are you happy with that? Thank you. Back to your second cup of coffee. Or fifth, I don't know how, how early your kids get up. Okay, see you yeah. soon. Bye. Bye.